In this video, I'm going to be comparing side by side a few different post-processing 3D printing techniques. So what I'm going to have is a controlled sanded. I will have a primer filler. I'm also going to show an acetone. And then I'll try doing all of the above. So with post-processing 3D prints, I've seen lots of great videos where they've shown sanding filler primers or acetones separately. What I wanted to do is I wanted to compare them all side by side using the same type of print. So I've chose this tree frog from Thingiverse. Um, all products that I used were purchased at a local or big chain store and all prints were intentionally made as quickly as I possibly could. So I didn't use supports, I didn't use a raft, I have a hollow print uh, my layer height is only 0 0.2 and on my printer I was able to select the fast setting. I kind of wanted them to have a bit of a gritty look to them so you could really get the full effect of what these different post-processing techniques do. And these are the products that I used. So I had a few different types of sandpaper. Um, I had this performing sanding or performance sanding sponge. Uh, this is the first time I've used it and I uh, really enjoyed Using that, it worked really well. Uh, just an acetone from a local store and a filler primer that I picked up at a hardware store. All right, so getting started here, what we're looking at are the initial prints. So this is my controlled. Uh, you can see that there's lots of lines on it. This is the one that I'm going to sand. You can tell that the nose is a little off. This is going to be my filler primer. This one I will run through some acetone vapor and the final one is going to have all of the above effects added to it for post-processing. So for sanding, uh, I usually start with a pretty high uh, sandpaper. And one thing I'd recommend is what I like to do is I go against the grain here. So you can see the grain run in one way and I sand the opposite way. Uh, one thing I wish I had for this video that I didn't is I wish I had some smaller files that would have helped quite a bit. But here we can see the before and after. So this is the same frog before and after. You can notice one thing that happened was I lost one of the front uh, hands. That was a bit unfortunate, but you can see that there's quite a bit of smoothing that has occurred between the before and after versions of this frog. Um, I did lose a little bit of detail in the eye that you can see here as well. So here's a close-up of the before and after. Uh, so you can tell that in the before, on the bridge of the nose, there was definitely some, some gaps. Uh, those are still prevalent in the after, but you can definitely tell that the back is uh, pretty smoothed out and some of the other areas. Now this sanding probably took me approximately 40 minutes. And again, if I had a file, I could have gotten in there and gotten probably some of the other smaller details worked out as well. So then what I decided to do is I gave each print a black paint coating to give them all kind of an equal look. So again, here's the before and here's after the painting. So it gets rid of some of those scuff marks. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted to take my controlled frog that you saw at the start and I painted it black as well. So here's the controlled versus the final sanded black frog. And as you can see, a lot of the uh, layer lines are gone. Uh, the one on the left kind of looks like a topographical map, and the one on the right is uh, quite a bit smoother. So for the next one, I did a filler primer. Uh, I'll be completely honest, when I do a filler primer, um, I tend to go a little heavy-handed. You're supposed to go uh, later at a time and let it dry. I don't tend to do that. So on the left is my before frog, and on the right is the after. You can see there's a very smooth uh, texture to the frog. Um, there are some cracks, and again, that's because I don't really follow the, the instructions very well, and I tend to put on a pretty thick coating. If I was to do this, uh, a, thinner coat or at a, a thinner coat at a time, and I allowed it to dry properly, I would probably get less cracking. But again, nonetheless, you can see that it is quite smoother on the right-hand side. And here's the comparison. Again, you can see those cracks on the right-hand side in the after, uh, near the back, and around the toes but overall it's quite smooth in comparison. Now with a primer filler, uh, you will want to sand it afterwards as well. 
And you can see that effect a little bit here when I put the black paint on, because you can see some of the sand lines that I had in there. Again, if I took a little bit more time, I may have been able to get it even smoother. And just like before, I have the controlled black painted frog on the left versus the primer filler black painted frog on the right, and the difference is quite drastic. Up next, I used acetone, uh, some acetone vapor. So what I did here is I took a glass jar, wrapped a paper towel in it, poured some acetone in. I then took the lid, put some aluminum foil on it, and then flipped the jar upside down over top of the frog. Uh, I was originally going to leave it outside in the sun because it was a pretty warm day, but I wound up having to go inside and just blast the jar with a hair dryer to get it up to temperature. It took maybe four or five minutes. And here's the effect. So this is the same frog before and after. Again, you can see on the back on the left of the before, there is a pretty drastic line that appeared. On the right, on the after, you can't see that line at all. But one thing that I didn't take into account is when the acetone melts or melts the plastic, you get kind of a layer around the feet. Um, I saw one video where somebody tied their prints up I might try that with some fishing line next time around something like the back leg. So again, here's the before and after. You can obviously tell that the after has a very smooth, shiny effect. Um, one of the toes on the, on the after on the back left broke off. It became so soft that it uh, just wiggled its way off pretty easily. So again, just like before, I took my acetone print and I painted it with a black coat of paint, it gets rid of the shiny effect, and then I control, I compared it to the controlled black paint. And yet again, you can see quite a bit smoother. Uh, some of the lines you're seeing are actually from the paintbrush. I, I didn't sand this one, so I just didn't do uh, a great job of painting it necessarily. And then finally, I decided to try a version where I did all three. So on the left, you see the original filler and on the right is one where I did sanding, acetone, and filler. Um, you can obviously tell right away that it's a bit smoother. So let's do the same comparison. This is the same frog before and after. Uh, again, you can see quite a bit of smoothness on the after. So again, what I did here is I sanded, I then used the acetone, and then I used the filler primer. So before, you can see again quite a few of the printing lines. Uh, again, like I said at the start of the video, I intentionally set the speed to be quite high and the print to be a bit rough. I wanted to see some drastic results. So on the right hand side we have the frog after it was sanded, and then after the acetone, and then after the filler primer. I then painted it black just like I did before. So you can get a direct comparison without the gray coloring of the primer. And then I compare this to the controlled black painted frog. Now, this is just a combination of all of them. So you can get a sense of what they all look like, the controlled in the center. I personally think the sanded frog has the best effect. It looks the nicest afterwards. However, it also takes the most work. I would say the filler also does a very good job. If you were to use the filler a little bit better than I did, following the instructions a little bit better, you would get a, a cleaner result, sort of like I did with the frog in the bottom right where I did all of them. I, I didn't put quite as thick of a layer of the primer on and I think it looks quite nice. So if I had to choose between all of these, the acetone, it, it's a bit of a pain to work with. It uh, it gives you a really shiny print, so if you're going for that effect, if you're not planning on painting it at all, uh, I think it, it can look pretty nice. Um, but if you have any intention of painting, I found applying the paint on the acetone print to be a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, so, I mean, again, I think it's pretty obvious. The more time you spend with your print in post-processing, the better the print is going to look. So again, for the sanding, I spent about 40 minutes sanding it, and it looks okay. I could have spent more time and I could have made it much smoother. I also could have printed on a much better quality and I would have got a much better print as a result. 
Uh, the filler, again, quick, easy. Uh, you don't necessarily have to sand it if you actually apply the primer quite, quite well, uh, following the instructions. However, um, I do find sanding it just helps a little bit, gets any uh, extra bumps out that you might accumulate over overall. Uh, so that's everything. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully this helps you make a decision when you are trying to find some way to post-process your 3D prints.